So this video is gonna be, uh, let's call it interesting and leave it at that. Oh boy, this should be fun. What I mean to say is I'm kinda getting the smallest bit excited for fall at 76 here recently. Oh god, pack up your kids, we're running before it's too late. No, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Before you unsubscribe, hear me out. Listen, listen, please listen. I do fully understand the storm that Bethesda has become over the past few years, but I'm a firm believer in the fallacy that the farther one sinks, the higher one can climb. The only problem here is Bethesda isn't just waltzing up a hill. They're practically heel-hooking Mount Everest. So why am I so optimistic that Bethesda can peel off their scabs and start anew? And why the hell am I being so metaphorical? One word, my friends. One word. Wastelanders. Just to start things off, I'd like to give a big thank you out to Noah Ramos. Now this might be pretty confusing. I know what you're thinking, and no, I am not being narcissistic. In fact, the guy who is sourcing the majority of the music in this video has the same exact first and last name as I do, which I thought was pretty cool. But if you want to go check him out, no, he is not an extension of myself, but he does make some phenomenal music, and it's the music you're listening to right now, actually. I'll leave a link in the description to his channel, and let's get right into the video. Now I must say, in no way do I mean that one DLC drop is going to make this game just work. I, I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. <laughs> I did, I read it on the internet, so it's true. And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. The game almost never just works. Uh, there are many bugs still present as I speak, many of which have been present since beta. Cheaters have been running rampant as of late, and I can't fucking stand the atomic shop. But the game is constantly, constantly getting better, and it's leagues ahead of what it used to be. I, I mean, at launch. And to me, at least, this up and coming DLC, which was delayed by the way, what the f will either save the game for many, or be the final nail in the coffin. No, screw coffins! If this DLC doesn't fix anything, it won't get a coffin. This game will get an urn, because it won't have any family to bury it. The game will be cremated, because that's the cheapest option. No, it'll be taxidermied and used as a coat rack at a f***ing Carl's Jr. or something. Then the Carl's Jr. will be shut down for having a taxidermied human as a f***ing coat rack, and it'll be sold to some guy with a mannequin fetish, have to sit there being assaulted until the guy's house burns down because he fell asleep cooking pop tarts or something mm, yeah as you can see this game can be frustrating it's really gotten on the nerves of a lot of people myself included myself am i like multiple people what anyway sooner or later things should get better in q1 2020 we will see whether or not this redemption arc of sorts can hold any water as that's really the official release date of this dlc and uh, if you do want to hit that subscribe button, I'll be covering the release of this DLC whenever it decides to come out. But in recent times, we have been getting some teases for this DLC. Now, I'm not going to go into those right now. I'll spank some of those photos on screen. Um, but if you'd like to come back in the future, I will be doing a further video covering the continued evolution of this DLC. Well, let me know and I'll, and I'll cover some of the other things if you guys really want me to. Anyways, as Bethesda has started to be more open about this game, I've started to do, as many do around a time like this, and I've started to do some heavy speculation. Right about now, I'm at an almost pre-release level of hype, which is saying a lot. I'm building up hope that this game comes out good. Do it, Bethesda! Make Fallout 76 great again! But in all my enthusiasm, something I've realized is the fact that I haven't really been looking forward to this game in an eternity. I say this in the sense that all I've been worrying about is whether Bethesda is fixing things on a more technical level as opposed to fixing things on a story level. This is partially because of the fact that the main story in this game wasn't exactly stellar by any means. As a matter of fact, it kind of felt almost throwaway at some point. You love your overseer, don't you? Now go on, get him! At this point, it kind of seems like Bethesda really can't write a story unless it involves somebody losing something or someone else. 
their main objective than just really being to go find whatever it is they lost. This is my biggest problem with Fallout 4, but this is a whole different topic for another video, so let's move on. Plot isn't really even the major issue, so I do understand that Bethesda wanted to hop on those bug issues because everyone in their dog had bug issues. Now this isn't to say that the entire game is terrible story-wise either. Yeah! Yeah, the Fosnot parade and the Halloween stuff last year, that was fun. Not to mention Nuclear Winter, when people aren't cheating, is a real hoot. But the game's story definitely has its problems. And amid all this worrying, I wasn't really looking at the game's updates as new features, rather just bug fixes that Bethesda spanked a nice coat of paint on so we wouldn't complain about them just being bug fixes and stuff. I mean, the whole point of Fallout is the good stories that they tell. That's the main appeal of New Vegas, that's why I love it so much, because there is such a heavy emphasis on amazing storytelling. Whether it be from an NPC or from a terminal, if you go do any anything in Fallout New Vegas, you're gonna find a story behind it, and that was just amazing. And then I realized one of the highlight features that Bethesda talked about at E3 2018. That free, sweet DLC. In this vein, Bethesda was touting the fact that all of the DLC for this game would be free, a fact that I was 100% on board with. But when the quality of the game hit me like a f***ing semi, I kinda totally forgot that little ditty. As everyone else probably did, as Bethesda tried desperately to craggle the broken pieces of glass back together without cutting themselves in the process, which I think they've done a bang up job of doing. But as we move on from this no-NPC lifestyle, Bethesda has confirmed that we will be receiving some new choice and consequence, dialogue options, and non-robot NPC updates. Long story short, this DLC is gonna be more in the vein of Fallout 3's Broken Steel, or the masterpiece that is Fallout New Vegas' Lonesome Road, and not the Fall Is Not Parade or Meat Week, things that we've been seeing as of late. Hey yo, dickhead! Your bias is showing! And as we move slowly but surely into this future that has been set up by Bethesda, I can't help but wonder what the story is going to be. And rather than making something up from scratch, Bethesda needs to use some of the quality content that it has already established and really hasn't taken advantage of at all. For example, this is the first time in any Fallout game that we have seen the aftermath of Nuclear Holocaust only 25 years removed. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is the least amount of time that has passed since the final night of the Great War, this night being exactly October 23rd, 2077. Oh, listen to him! He knows the lore of Fallout! And other than that whole plague thing, as of yet we've been encouraged to basically ignore this fact for the most part. Other than getting some dragons and rock monsters and some loosely believable stories about some dead factions, that's pretty much it. The story doesn't matter too much because they're all dead. People? Dead. Animals? Mostly dead. And not monsters will have died or been eradicated by 2077 as we don't see them in Fallout 3. What I mean to say is we don't really have anything to give us any indication that hey, the world just killed itself and that's really kind of disappointing. Fallout 3 is only 200 years after, Fallout New Vegas is 214 years after, and Fallout 4 is 221 years after. Fallout 76 only taking place 25 years after is insane in the fact that we don't have more of a rust survival simulator kind of th thing going on right now. Even the nuclear winter aspect of the game is just a sorry excuse for a battle royale. And while yeah, that game is really fun, it's not the kind of lore that I was begging for when this game first came out and up until this point. If you think about it, for some reason things are a lot bleaker in 2277 than in 2102 which makes no sense at all. Maybe we could meet an entire faction of people who have had it rough up until this point. They then find Appalachia, which while it is a area where the majority of the people have died from a plague, it's better than living in a place like DC where it's completely infested with super mutants, you know? Or maybe just some new wave of radiation comes over Appalachia because blue skies, trees, and not really anyone suffering is a stark contrast from the super mutant infected Washington DC. And more than this, if we could get some overlap with characters from Fallout 3, i.e. Gob, Fox, and President Needham, I would lose my mind! 
but further than this, if we could get some major map changes, some new locations and things of that caliber, I would be extremely appreciative. Maybe tie in not just the factions being introduced in this new DLC, but also have some fan service. Bethesda needs to be a lot more forward in my opinion when it comes to just chucking that fan service right in our faces. In my opinion, if you played Fallout 3, Fallout 4, or maybe even Fallout New Vegas, you are deserving of some kind of reward, you know? These games are made in a certain way where you do not have to go back and play the older ones if you want to understand what's going on story-wise. And that's a good thing, but if we could have something like they do in Marvel, where they're chucking these references from comics and older movies and cartoons and things like that in your face throughout all of their films, would quite frankly lose my head. Also, in a similar vein to this, if we could convince the hardcore Fallout community, because if we're being absolutely transparent, that's pretty much the only people playing the game at this point, that Fallout 76 is a, a war chest of lore and background information on the Fallout universe. So that could be a very compelling reason for a lot of people that are interested in this game to join and to play and just boost their player numbers. Now am I saying more lore is going to save the game? <laughs> no! But it'll add a pro to the rapidly decreasing list of pros. Mm, to be honest though, at the end of the day, all I want is a fight between the Brotherhood and the Enclave, or something of that caliber. Maybe we could get some Enclave NPCs in here, because Bethesda did retcon reasons for the Brotherhood to be here already, and the Enclave is... It, it's here. And as for Nuclear Winter, if we could get some Enclave troops trying to kill everyone, or maybe helping you depending on which side you identify with, that would be something that I would enjoy. Not gonna say including Enclave and all that isn't gonna anger some people, but I can see them retconning them in just because they're a very established uh, organization, and that's something that they need in this game right now. Less new things and things that people already understand and have understood since 2008. Hey, you crazy person, you've sung the praises long enough. Now tell him how shit Bethesda is! Yeah, he's got a good point. There is an immense layer of ill will between people in this community and Bethesda themselves. This isn't a Hello Games scenario where Bethesda has only made two games, gone through bankruptcy and flooding, had to sell their house, etc. Bethesda is a large, multi-billion dollar corporation, correct me on that number if I'm wrong by the way. They had the money in the bank to make this game good they didn't. Just one old-fashioned, good, quality DLC drop isn't gonna change or fix that fact for anyone. At the end of the day, whether Bethesda can pull a Nomansky or not hinges on whether they can be faithful from here on out or not, rather than give us what we want every so often. Myself and many others, Fallout 76 is an unhealthy relationship. We have to comb through all the bad find the good, and only present that to ourselves. We stick with this game. We tell people who badmouth it that they should actually try it. We stick our neck out for Bethesda, and if they slap us in the face for it, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to continue with Bethesda. Because with slaps in the face like Fallout First and the $7 fridges, it can be hard sometimes to love this game. But that's the hardest part. Already finished The Outer Worlds, and whether or not I like it, I will always come crawling back to Bethesda Softworks for my Fallout fix. I'm just so nervous that Wastelanders is gonna hook me and hang me out to dry. But what do you guys think? With all the information that I've presented to you, what do you guys think is going to happen? Do you expect Bethesda to pull this off? Do you expect Wastelanders to be horrendous? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I always read them because I'm the smallest channel on the planet, and I will see you guys later. By the way, I just wanted to get this out there. Thank everybody who's watching this video. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. January is a slow time. I'm taking college classes. I've got high school all day, five days a week, so it can be kind of stressful. 
and like, I, like I've said before, this is for fun. In no way do I ever expect to make any money off of YouTube. As a matter of fact, if the platform isn't dead within the next six years, it'll be a damn miracle. Even still, if you guys watch till the end, I appreciate it. Please share this channel with your friends if you do enjoy, and yeah. Oh right, yes, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that uh, uh, Mr. House, which is one of the main antagonist or protagonist or however you want to see it in Fallout New Vegas, will be born in about six months from now. June 25th, 2020 is his birthday, and that's 17 days after my 18th birthday, so yeah. Honest to God, Fallout is one of my favorite franchises. I've been playing it since I was around 12 years old, so this is a big, big, big game for me. If you guys want me to stick to films or maybe go to anime or something, let me know in the comments. I'll completely oblige. I, I, I just want you guys to be happy. Um, but I also want to be happy myself. I'm droning now, so I'll cut to the end, and yeah, I'll see you guys around. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you don't, then go ahead. Express your dislikeness. Alright, go ahead. Adios.